Oh, hello. Good afternoon. Good evening and good morning, depending where you are in this world. So today we've got a very special guest on the GNT sessions, and uh, this is going to be episode eight. And we're very pleased to have um, a very interesting person, and I'm sure you're going to love this episode. It's a guy called Joe Toscano, um, and he's joining us live from Sao Paulo in Brazil, the lucky man. And he's been on a bit of a global tour, and he's continuing. This is like part of the, his global tour, but I'm sure I'm letting, let, let him explain a bit more about that in a second. Um, so it's Andrew Turner, the host of the GNT Sessions podcast, and glad you're all here. And um, so to kick things off, welcome, Joe. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Great you could join us on this lovely sunny day, not in London, but it's, I assume it's sunny down in Brazil. It is, um, it is definitely sunny down here. It's winter and it's 80 degrees, so. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. Great. I should, I should, we, should do a, we should do a kind of swap, shouldn't we? I should be down in Brazil. You should be in London. Or maybe we both should yeah. be in Brazil. Even better. Yeah. Um, so I know we, I know we, <laughs> I know we met a few, uh, few weeks ago and, um, in London itself, actually, when, we, when you were in, uh, in the, this near Silicon Roundabout of all places, yeah. in, the, yeah. in the tech center of uh, London. And we talked about um, some of the stuff you're working on. So I suppose, you know, initially, maybe hand over the pass, pass to you and say, could you just introduce yourself, explain, you know, what, what you're working on, who you are, what gets you up in yeah. the morning? Absolutely, yeah. So for the people who haven't heard of me, um, most recently, I was a consultant for Google out in Silicon Valley. That was uh, up until June 2017. I left last summer. Uh, to help start lay an ethical foundation to the industry. Uh, I learned a lot while I was working out there, a lot of really interesting stuff, a lot of stuff I'm very excited about. But I also saw things like we're all seeing now that I was a bit concerned about, you know. And so I left to focus on that, to help us move forward in an ethical way and to help us lay out regulation. Because right now, I mean, I think regulation is going to come, and we'll talk about this, but regulation is going to come. So I I think it's important that we talk about it before it comes instead of just having it put down on us as an industry. And so I'm helping try to spearhead that and really lead the way in, in this motion. So, yeah. So, so you said that you, in your intro, you just said that you, you, you were at Google until um, mid last year as, a, as, a, as an external person, an external advisor, external consultant. How, how long were you there? How long did you work in, in Google? I was there just a little over a year. I consulted on about 15, 16 different projects. Uh, I also managed some oh, wow. junior, so, um, It was a very fast year, yeah. Um, but I've been doing design and development for, um, what? how old am I now? I'm 29 on Saturday. So I oh, am eight years into thing. Yeah, thank you. Eight years into it now. Um, so yeah, a lot of different industry experiences all the way throughout the United States and internationally. Um, but yeah, I stepped away mostly because, like I said, it, it was very interesting. I learned a lot. I saw a lot of great things in a very short period. Um, but also knowing like my skill set and having the influence I do in writing for InVision and Smashing and Adweek, I decided I'm going to leverage that to help help us make change. So yeah, right. I left. Yeah. So, so if you talk about what you're doing, you know what you're doing today. What what are the current projects? What, what well, how are you describe what your occupation is today? You know, you said you were a consultant when you started, but what what would you? What's your new your new persona? Your new um, sure, your new sure. uh, it's what do you call it? Your, your your new meme or whatever you want yeah, to call it. It's probably the hardest question you could throw at me. Um, I, <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so I am labeled as a designer by most people. That's like what I've had my jobs as, right? I do code as well. I've been doing that for eight years as well, front end. So when you say design, you mean creative, like a creative director kind of background, is that? Right, right? yeah, that's designer. probably a better way to frame it as creative director. And I know code, I, I know everything from strategy all the way through implementing in code. So it helps okay. me communicate across teams really well, right? Mm. Uh, but yeah, what I'm doing now is I've started a nonprofit foundation and so now you can add founder to that. You can add keynote speaker. You can add CEO. Author. CEO. CEO. I try to avoid that term. You know, I feel like a CEO, I need to wear a collar and I just don't, you know? Yeah, so. but uh, the, best, the best one I had the other week was uh, there's, a, there's another one of the, my future guests who, who um, will remain anonymous at the moment, but he actually calls himself the CEO. Yeah. He actually calls himself the chief engineering officer. Okay. So it's slightly different, yeah. slightly different, you know, yeah. bit of a, you know, engineering, ed, engineering is going to come through a renaissance. Yeah, um, I like the I like the creative in my title. You know, I think 
think it allows me to walk out and have really fashionable socks and not have to wear a collar <laughs> and be that, that fun guy to be around, you know? Um, so I like to keep the creative in my title, but yeah, I, I play a lot of different roles right now and it's uh, it's a challenge, but it's a very good challenge. It's, uh, one so I'm you glad. said, so you said you, you founded a foundation, um, <laughs> And, but you, you, you've also, so you, you didn't mention, you said, you said you found the foundation, you've got a creative yeah. background, yeah. but you're also technical. So you kind of yeah. a bit of a, a bit of a mashup yeah. really, aren't you? You're kind of a bit of yeah. a hybrid. I think I was uh, the wrench that Silicon Valley never expected, you know? It Ooh. was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just like kind of. I thought you were going to say a hammer then. I thought you were going to say a hammer. Oh, boom, no, boom, no, boom. no. Uh-uh. I, I do things that I don't think people expected, you know? Um, I was. So throughout college, I mean, I was in the psychology department, but um, oh, wow. in the data science part of it, you know, I was doing graduate level research and data science while I was uh, a sophomore in college. I was always math oriented growing up. Right. Um, they actually, when you, you know, you go into college and they say, you should be this. Yeah. They, yeah. Me, they, they kind of, they really kind of stream you, don't they? Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. They should, they told me I should be a math professor and I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> like that sounds really terrible. So I decided but, but to, to go to psychology. That's quite a, that's quite, I mean, it's like analytical versus yeah, qualitative. Yeah. Well, and it can, it appears that way. I think there's a lot of that binary mm. process behind it, but actually there's a lot of science behind psychology and human mm. humanitarian issues. So um, I leveraged my knowledge in math to bring that farther ahead. And then I got into it deeper and deeper. And it was a point where you either choose to go um, the theoretical route and maintain a research background, get a PhD. Right. Or what I did, I said, no, I'm going to get into design and I'm going to create products and I'm going to go the applied route with psychology. Okay. Uh, and that's really what happened there. So I ended up going on getting a second degree in creative tech and a master's that I followed up with creative tech as well. So um, it all just kind well, of. What do you, what do you, I mean, just on create, yeah, I mean, that's fascinating because that psychology side is, is very useful, you know, whatever you do in the future, you mm-hmm. know, just kind of understanding the human human mind and everything like that, understanding how people cope with different things. Fascinating. Yeah. But, yeah. but then on, on the creative tech side, what, 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 what would you call creative tech? What does that mean? It's the weirdest thing, huh? Um, well, I think there's, I think there's just a new literacy that we're, we're seeing right now, you know, where um, knowing how to use Photoshop and InDesign mm. and uh, Sketch and all these tools and code all the way through, right? Take, how mm. to take a photo with a camera, how to take video. Right. Um, I think that's a visual literacy. That's what they call it, you know? In, yeah, in okay. Right, right, uh, okay. So, so, basically not, so basically not being Guy Kawasaki and using Canva. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, but, yeah, I, but I, must, I must admit, I was, a few years ago, I actually went to see Guy, Guy Kawasaki. He was over in London. Um, mm-hmm. And you probably, I don't know if you've ever met him, but he's, I mean, when he, when he's, he's mesmerizing. He's brilliant. Yeah. He's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, he's great. I have not had the opportunity to meet him. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he, I mean, obviously, he, he's got, the, the stories he, te- he tells are just, I mean, they're just legendary. I mean, some of the stuff he was yeah. telling about being with Steve Jobs and everything like that, just absolutely. The last thing in Kawasaki, you've got to do something crazy. <laughs> exactly well I mean, you know all the, all the stuff he puts on google plus i mean i i, I kind of I, i'm i'm subscribed to him he's put mm-hmm. stuff like you know he's, he's, he's surfing with his daughter i mean the stuff the, the diversity of what he does that he posts on and obviously mm-hmm. through the kind of the platforms he's got it's fascinating yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's definitely always on <laughs> yeah yeah well and, and, and like my whole goal while i was going through school and, and growing up is i wanted to be well-rounded you know i yeah. think we're so industrialized nowadays it's easy to get pigeonholed into a specialty. Um, and, and I just, I was never one to like want to do that. So mm. not that it was easy. I had to definitely push like all my advisors. They're like, no, make a decision and commit, yeah. commit. And I kind of always did everything. Uh, and I figured out how well, to do it. We start thinking yeah. about, you know, like Larry, you know, given, well, that's actually a thing about it. We, you know, we, we went through kind of quite a big milestone yesterday with your former employer, you know, Google, you know, celebrating mm. its 20th birthday. Happy birthday to Google. Happy mm-hmm. birthday to Google. Um, so, but you know, if you think about, I think the, the reading about uh, Larry and Sergey is that mm-hmm. they are poly, is it polymaths? Polymath. Poly? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, that thing about, and obviously there's quite a lot of research around that, around mm-hmm. how people can cope with different things and the, 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 the plus and minus, you could say, or the, the ups and downs of, of being that type of individual. Sure. But sure. I, I, I agree with you what you said about, um, it's not, it's not like, I think, to be, 
to cope with the dynamic nature of the world today, you, you can't just stream down one route. You've got to be multi, yeah. you know, you've got to develop multiple skills and experiences. Yeah. And I think that's the right thing to do. Yeah. And, and I also think uh, I was lucky because, you know, I grew up in a entrepreneur family. My grandpa okay. ran his own business. My parents ran his own, their own business. So like okay. I had that sales and business background that a lot mm. of people go to school for, right? That was right. just kind of built into my life. Right. right. Um, and then, you know, I, I, my uncle was an artist growing up. So okay. I learned a lot about art uh, okay. growing up. Okay. It all just kind of was like part of my life. I didn't think of it like school. Mm. And then it turned out to be exactly what I needed to react to my life that I wanted. Uh, I think I got, I just really blessed to be in the position I'm in, you know? Well, I have to admit my, my father actually, God bless his soul, what she's passed away now, but he was, um, he was a design director. So he was into design. You know, he's, he was in, he got an art background and I have to be proud that I actually have got an art degree as well. We're not an art degree. It's an art, an art O level it's called, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a school thing. I was, I think I was about the only person that passed the art, art exam. I won't, yeah. I, won't, I won't show you the picture. It's a bit, bit embarrassing. But anyway, um, yeah. so I suppose you're talking about uh, the G and the T. So, you know, the yeah. G and T session is about growth and technology. Mm-hmm. Um, some people think it's about gin and tonic, but obviously that's another story. Maybe that's, that's the, the next, next episode. Not surely, we will surely not drink gin and tonic, <laughs> but obviously not today. Um, but the, so I suppose on the G side, you know, your personal growth story, everybody's got, got their kind of, what they've been through, you know, the kind of mm-hmm. their peaks and valleys, as we would call it. Um, yeah. You know, because it's not, not everybody's like journey's been like that. Well, yeah. maybe some, some exceptions, but you learn through yeah. that. So any, anything you want to share with the audience around what your personal growth story has been? What yeah, you I mean, I think mine definitely is not linear, like you're mentioning. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of dramatic ups and downs. Um, self-inflicted. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, I always, I always had a lot of ambition. I wanted to do bigger things. And so um, I knew if I wanted to make those things happen, I had to take risks. Um, right. and, and, and what I'm doing, it's hard to explain to a lot of people, um, okay. especially my parents, for example. You know? mm. um, and, and I think a big part of my growth story has to do with the fact that I grew up in an area in Nebraska, United States, um, where what I do now was – like talking to aliens, you know, when I right. was a kid. And, and mean, so I mean, in the context of what, what their reference point was, what their world was, it's kind of like yeah. miles apart. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. And, and my parents, I love my parents. They're great people, but they're uneducated in the classical sense. You know, they didn't go to college. Okay. So they know what a doctor is. They know what a lawyer is. They don't know what a creative technologist is. Right. Okay. Um, and so well, I, even, I, even I had to ask you what that was. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, Exactly. And so it was something where they, for a while, really didn't support what I was doing. And it's just because, you know, parents care. Okay, because they, they, didn't, they didn't understand it. They thought it was like down the wrong track or something. Yeah, yeah. It's not that they hated me or whatnot, but they just, uh, they're like, you know, you should do something that's better for your life, right? And um, they didn't understand the potential. They didn't understand what I saw. Right. And so there was a good part of my life where I was, I was supporting myself beyond, I think, what a lot of kids my age were doing. Because they're like, hey, you can do it, but you, you pay for it. You know, we don't. We oh, don't really? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's fine. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm not angry about that at all. Um, but I think that that pushed me to drive mm. harder into it. Right. And I took bigger risks in that sense where um, like a lot of kids I would go to college with, their parents are paying their loans or like things like that. And um, it's all my risk. Right. And same after I got out of school, I went to a graduate program. I moved to a new state. I paid all those bills myself and it really forced me to say, do I want this or do I not? And it really right. forced me to commit to Cause, it. Because so you were self-financing everything. So you, you, it wasn't as though you, your parents were funding everything. You were having to make right. decisions around what you right. spend your money on. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think a lot of my peaks, and my valleys have been um, me coming into adulthood a lot earlier than a lot of right. people. And um, that pushing me into work and into skills that other people may not develop for a uh, longer term because, you know, they have different lifestyles. There's nothing mm. wrong with that, but um, yeah, I, I've worked so a if, lot. So if, so, so, if you were, so if you were sat here, I mean, I presume, so give me your 29. So I presume that was about 15 years ago. You kind of got, mm-hmm. you, you started to, I don't know, is it when you were between 14 and 16, you started to realize that you had to, sounds like yeah. more, more, more chart your own course. 
you know, build, yeah, your, well, own, bring, build yeah. your own yellow brick road kind of thing. Is that, is that yeah, right? Yeah, it was probably about 16 where it really took off. I started working about 13. I was detailing right. cars and that's, you know, another point that really got my development. My dad was the guy that like, when I'm, when you're detailing cars, he could see a speck of dust from 15 years away. And, you know, so it's just like those kind of things that train you. <laughs> but, but in terms of like, um, they, yeah, they used the to call you Hawkeye or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. But no, the, the struggle of it is just like, yeah, the, the ambition, I call it the hunt. Uh, a lot okay. of people you know, like, Oh, I'm grinding away. I'm hustling away. First, I don't like the grind, right? I'm not out on the corner selling drugs. I don't like the hustle because uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not putting, I'm not fooling anyone, right? I'm yeah. Not, you know, I like the hunt because it fits my life. It is, I see something I want and I go get it. I'm going to tell you I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it, you know? Um, and that's, that's, that, that, I mean, but that sounds like that's quite that's quite an interesting statement. You see, I mean, it's that I don't know if you've been have you been involved in the military because that sounds that's quite a military kind of or I haven't, but um, Nebraska is a very conservative state. Yeah, so I grew up in very conservative lifestyle. I'm pretty. I would say I'm liberal. I think okay. everyone I grew, with, I grew up with would say I'm liberal, but um, I do have those conservative values in me, definitely. Okay. Uh, yeah, and and I think that's that's more of what it was was just always setting goals and pursuing them regardless of, you know, my social life, regardless of the, uh, the fact sometimes I couldn't afford food. Um, I'm, you know, having to bike places to get anywhere. Right. Like, so it's, it's real, so, it's, so it sounds like it's made you pretty resilient and real kind of ownership and, and also yeah. lots of focus, which, is, which yeah. is a really good, really good skill to learn. And re- I think some yeah. people, you know, um, you know, elder in your years, yeah, are, mm-hmm. are still struggling with that thing. You know, when you talk to people, mm-hmm. they, they're still trying to work stuff out and they're maybe 10, 10, even 20 years older than what you, you, you know, you, where you are today. So that's yeah. a great, that's a great little story for you to share on that. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I think that's like the growth, right. It is, is, I guess it's less to do with like my technical skills and more to do with the personal thing. I think that that totally mm. changed my technical skills long-term and the way I view it. So yeah, I would but say it's about my, if we, it's, it's all about the mind, isn't it? It's the mind, you know, if your mind yeah. gets in gear, then you, you go down that track. You, go, you, know, you accelerate, you, you kind of remove all hurdles, you just go for it. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so, so if, we, if we switch you from the G to the T, um, I know you, you kind of, you, you, you alluded to some stuff that you may be working on the technology side. Um, yeah. what, what, what's your, you know, you've obviously been exposed to technology. What, what's your kind of, your, your story with the T side, the tech side? What, what? When did you first get involved in it? What what kind of what kind of tech was it? Yeah. Um, you know how how deep did you go? It sounds like you've gone quite deep. Um, yeah. Could you it give us a, a bit of perspective way. on that? A long way back, actually. Um, my dad, uh, he worked with the post office, and he okay. was, worked with this buddy um, that, like, you know, in reference to modern culture and tech, he was a neckbeard guy, right? He it was, was a one of he was a neck beard guy. You know, he was one of those guys that sits in his basement and has a big neck beard, like just sits at a computer all the time and, and no one knows what he does really. But um, okay. he's, my, he's my dad's friend. And uh, what, you mean, of, you, today be called like a geek or a nerd. Is that kind a of geek? The, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. All right. Neck, maybe that's just a joke we had in the Valley. All the engineers have neck beards or something like that. But yeah, that's uh, so he was, one of, he was one of those kind of guys. Right. And uh, I, he taught me how to hack computers at a very young age. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, really? I didn't wow. think about it at the time. At the time, you know, I was just having fun. He taught me how to, like, make the computer do fun things. And then later, looking back, I was like, man, I was working in the command line at, like, 13 years old, you know, executing commands in, in command line interface code. You mean, and, you mean uh, like, on a, on a Unix or a mainframe or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Back in wow. the day, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't building machines, but I was comfortable with it, right? But so you're, I think but that, you're, you're a very ethical hacker. That's what you're saying. That's, that was your next mile. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, back then I was a, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I think it, like, I, I think it just made it comfortable for me to get involved in code when I got older. Okay. Know? I wasn't intimidated by it, by like a lot of people, you know. So write it. So it's kind of shell script and all that kind of stuff. You do, you doing that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow, yeah. wow. So um, yeah, nothing like don't don't take that like oh he's a he's a big hacker. I'm not. <laughs> but, no, no, um, no. But no, but just getting yeah. you know if you think about it, so it's, I mean my, my observation the last couple of decades you know a lot of the concepts that, that I did when I was you know your age yeah 
yeah. um, they're still the same. It's just they've been repackaged, yeah. Or the, 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 but uh, you know, you can still log on to a, a Unix system. You can still use Vi, yeah. But, yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's been there for donkeys, yeah. So it's it's, it's fascinating yeah. how some stuff changes, but some the fun, some of the fundamentals. Well, not a lot of the fundamentals are still there. It's right. still a right. it's still processes binary. It's all that kind yeah. of stuff, you know. So right. And so when I got older and I got deeper into code as a profession, it was like picking up a second language, like redoing it, you know? So it was a lot easier for me, I think, than a lot of people. Right. Uh, so that's, that's probably where it started with code. Uh, with design on that side of the, the T, I think it's like uh, my uncle was an artist, you know, and I learned from oh, him. Okay. If right. you want to make, if you want to draw a tree, you got to draw every single leaf, right? Uh, and, and I learned a lot of detail from him and craft. I actually remember playing in Microsoft paint when I was younger, oh, probably wow. 12, 13 <laughs> years old, you know, and I when, literally, when, was, when we, when we both thought Microsoft paint was the end, it was the best product and the best application ever. You Before don't we, still we, think that? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, I, no, have but, to, I, ha I have to admit that I, de I actually did because I've got this iPad pro now at the moment yeah. and um new I've, stuff. Been, I've been starting to use the pen yeah it's unbelievable unbelievable yeah. what they can new do with that. Really good. yeah it really is out of this world it's just you, you would not but, comprehend that just you would not comprehend what you can do with it no it's, it's totally different that's, that's, yeah. that's, le that's legal then, obviously <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but, uh, but yeah back, back then i remember this phrase popping into my head while i was working on Microsoft Paint trying to design things. I was thinking to myself, I love art. This is awesome to put it in a computer, but I have to stop doing this. I'm too OCD. I'll, I'll go crazy <laughs> looking at the pixels and designing the pixels. And then right. 15 years later, I'm doing it professionally. You know, <laughs> I obviously got over that fear. But, um, yeah. Yeah, but you see, you get, you get you're getting paid for it. Well, I mean, you know, if you think yeah. about it, to your point is, you know, I remember, um, what was it, the first, I can't remember, the, I got, you know, that you remember the Mac, you remember the portable Mac, the one with the, mm -hmm. the colors, what was it mm -hmm. called, the iBook, yeah? yeah? Yeah. And then even just using the applications on there, and obviously it's moved on a hell of a lot from there, but just, mm -hmm. just I, th I just think the, it's this thing about, I was just reading on this book on the way here before, before I did the session was, was talking about uh, Steve Jobs and about you know the, the whole point with Apple was to to mix art and technology, mm -hmm. yeah, or yeah. you know art and design and technology into one one experience and you know obviously yeah. that was what they achieved um, mm -hmm. because I think that's that creative side you know because you know wow. humans are creative they're also mm -hmm. analytical as well but it's that kind of it's that that's that beautiful part of the yeah. the brain so and, and the mind isn't it yeah. it's a yeah. really really interesting really powerful really powerful CPU. Yes. Um, so I suppose it sounds like that you kind of, you didn't, well, you, I suppose you kind of got cajoled into it because you, you, I presume you're saying that your father's friend, because he was kind of, you know, doing this thing with the computers that you kind of like were, were hanging around there and you kind of got involved in it from there. It doesn't yeah. sound like, there you, you, wasn't a plan. It was just kind of an epiphany moment. Oh, that kind yeah, of, it kind just, of happened. just happened. Yeah. It just happened. It was, uh, like I said, I mean, I'm, really blessed to be in the position I'm in because I just followed the things that interested me and mm -hmm. I luckily made a career out of it, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, as, as you, as you saw from, you know, the, when I did the briefing with you uh, for this episode, you know, I never, I never viewed that this technology, you know, topic would, would be so transformative and suddenly it's such a hot space. It's like, so it's like, you know, like being about top, but it's now ice cool. And yeah. when, you know, when a couple of decades they're going, why are you working on that stuff? And it's like really yeah. weird thing to do. Are you, are you, are you okay? Yeah. yeah. And now yeah. suddenly they're going, wow, you've got, you've got all this experience. And you've done this and done that. And they go, yeah, yeah. it's just, it's just, just kind of, it's just fashionable. It's a Renaissance. Yeah. So we're, we're the Renaissance men. That's what we are. Absolutely. So on the, on the business side, I suppose, I know you've got some very, very interesting plans in 2018, 2019 and, yeah. So what, what on the on the on the business side? Obviously, given you've, I suppose you you know you've embarked on that kind of that journey that you know setting yeah. the foundation, yeah. um, you know doing what you do now. And so what 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 do you do um, on a weekly basis? What are you doing? What's the what's the growth plan or the growth strategy with regards to your business? 
Man, um, talking, I do a lot of podcasts. I do a lot of writing. Um, I do a lot of, I'm coding. I do everything myself right now. Uh, I haven't okay. hired anyone else. So you're talking like I'm coding the website. I'm connecting the payment platforms. I'm designing the website. I'm writing the blog post for smashing. You know, I'm talking on the podcast. I'm speaking at keynotes at, I've been at 19 different states, nations across four continents in the past year. Fantastic. You know? uh, Fantastic. So, and that's all me. So I'm always doing something. <laughs> but well, you, do, well, you do something and then sometimes you have to navigate Brazilian traffic as well. Oh my yeah, God. But... <laughs> oh my gosh. Brazilian traffic is like throwing spaghetti at a map and just watching it. <laughs> which bit <laughs> sticks and which bit doesn't stick. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, so you, 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 you do a lot of keynotes. So what, what would be an example? What are the kind of um, keynotes you've been doing? What, where have you been speaking recently? Yeah. Um, so I've done everything from like, I, I did an event called UX next in Palo Alto last fall where I was speaking with like head of AR and VR at Google chief product officer, at like Coca-Cola and okay. City Bank and Porsche and a bunch of big names. Right. Uh, I've done all the way there. Now, keynotes down here in brazil uh over in germany i'm going to australia in october uh everywhere and then all the way from there to like classrooms all the way to private events with different organizations you know i've spoken privately with rga with ibm with pivotal labs and several other companies that are pretty large and that's always really rewarding too because that means that company's interested in what you're doing and maybe helping change their culture a bit and influence right. their culture so it's so it was a privilege to go in privately and talk with everyone, have a really intimate conversation. Right. Um, yeah, keynotes aren't cool. Keynotes are definitely fun, and uh, it's good. You know. Well, I suppose it's, it's yeah. I mean, it's fun. It's even more fun when you get the interaction with the audience. I suppose if you get like a good, a good kind of Q and A with the mic and stuff like that, and you get right, it really, yeah. really buzzing. So that's good. Yeah, and it's it's not that I don't appreciate the keynotes, but it's harder to have that kind of connection with the audience when you have three hundred mm. plus people in the crowd than yeah. it is when you have a team of 10 or 30 people, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. They both have their advantages. And so the, the, the current projects you've got on, you, you're doing your keynoting, you're doing your, obviously your blogging and everything like that. And, yeah. but then you, you mentioned, I think, uh, that you've been working on a book. Is that right? Or is, is that, is that still yeah. something that you talk about, you can talk about or do you want to, do you want to talk yeah. about it? Yeah. It's uh, I just finished it last week and uh, it's going to press. Yeah. Holy shit, man. <laughs> it's real. Um, <laughs> no, it was, uh, it's been a long process. Um, it's been about two years in the making. I'd say this book itself was actually written in about six months and then right. designed in about two, but it's been about a two year process. Uh, and where I started was more in the chat and conversation design space. I started there because that was my specialty. Um, that was where I won awards. I won Cannes Lions, I won Cleo's, DNAD, FWA. Oh, Cleo's. Yeah. Yeah. On, mm -hmm. on, on, so chatbot is the key, it's the hot word, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't yeah. like to call it, I hate that phrase because I think everyone thinks messenger platform mm -hmm. or something. Conversation design is what I do. Okay, you know, okay. Yeah. So kind of a human Conversation interaction. Human interaction. Between Interaction between a machine and, and a human or machine and machine? Through conversation, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, that's where I've won my awards. So I started to write a book about that stuff. And um, what I found is that while I was giving these talks around the world, everyone loved it. They were very interested, but they were like, hey, what you're talking about is like only stuff that you can do with the big companies. You know, my company won't be able to do that for five or 10 years. Mm. Um, and I'm more concerned about um, the ethics of what you're doing, you know, of okay. what all these companies are doing. I'm more concerned about what's happening inside Silicon Valley. Okay. And I, and I heard that a lot. You know, I spoke mm. in Portland, Oregon. I had a 45 minute talk and I had an hour and a half line afterwards. Like people were an, concerned. An hour and a half line. What you mean? Afterwards. People wanted to talk to you afterwards. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah it was crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, it was nuts. And so I just decided, you know, at a certain point I was like, I need well, to you, change. You, you, you're just getting oh, all these data points and you thought you've got to do something about this. Is that the kind of the, yeah, yeah. It was more so like, I, I knew what they're saying is right. Like the stuff I was working on was way out for a lot of companies. So I said, mm. you know, I think this is a good point in history to set a good foundation okay. because people aren't there yet. So let's set the foundation right. 
and then mm. the industry is better for it. Um, and so I've pivoted a little bit since then, and now it's more macro perspective. Um, it's four parts to the book. One is what the fuck is happening, and it's <laughs> absolutely what it sounds like. You know what the beep is happening? Yes, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that one. I forgot. No, it's fine. No, no, it's, it's just I think no, but get going. Keep going. Yeah, that's chapter so, one. Yeah, that talks part, well, one. That's part one, right? It's uh, it talks you know everything from like why is data so important? How is it being used? Um, what's the dangers of fake news? What are these companies doing that you're not really realizing they're doing? Things like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, the kind of underwater stuff that you don't really, you don't really aware of. Yeah. So like we all hear about it in the news, but I put it into a story and I put it from an insider's perspective. Right. Okay. Um, second part is how did we get here? Because a lot of people think, you know, it's so far ahead and in a sense it is, but mm. if you actually think about where we came from and the logical steps it's taken exponentially, Mm. or right where we should be you know the problem is that a lot of people can't comprehend the exponential rate so right. i put it into something that's easy to understand and so people can see this so is kind of I'm distill it distill it down so so the so more than the you know the kind of the gen is it i suppose the question for me is who's mm -hmm. your who's your ideal audience who, who are you trying to target you know, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. Of so i think this is it's kind of hard to say right because uh it's in a language, right? So if, if I write for like Smashing Magazine or if you're to write for like the New York Times, mm. you have to write at about an eighth grade reading level, right? Okay. That's not, that's not to make it for people who don't understand. That's just to make it accessible, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And so the book is written like that. It's written in a way that I think the general public could pick up and read it. And okay. I do hope they do. Um, but I think there's also a lot of stuff that technical people are going to read and they're going to be like, wow, I've never thought of that before. Mm. Or hmm, I've actually never even heard of that idea before. Mm. Right. So you're going to, I think it's, it's for the general odd, the general public, sorry, to pick up and to help them understand what's going on because uh, a lot of them are scared about what's happening. Mm. A lot of people don't know and they want to, they want to respond, but they don't know how. They want, well, they want the clarity. They want the clarity of yeah. understanding. So they're going to get that. Um, for technical people, uh, I'm going to give you the language to adopt and sell ethical work into your company. Because I know all of us got into this. Oh, you mean like the, you mean like what, what a company, what a company should do to be ethical and, and live within the right guidelines. Is that the kind of, is that your, your kind of, of your, um, like, your, like what your, what your kind of your cookbook of what you should do? To be, kind to of, be, yes. Right. Part okay. Of it, I would say like, it's more so like if I learned anything while consulting for Google, it is how to sell an idea. You know, when right. you're moving billions of dollars, you don't just have a story and grab a beer and chum up and sell something. Right. Mm. You have to have data because yeah. a fraction of a change is millions or billions of dollars lost. So, one of the most difficult parts about making ethical technologies or people, you know, consumer facing products mm -hmm. is having the numbers to sell those humanitarian issues. So how, do, so how do you measure that and how do you collect, how do you collect the data and then measure it and then feedback and then make decisions? Is that kind of how, how did I do that? No, no, no. How, that's what I'm thinking about the process. Oh, so oh yes. How, that's, how do you, how do you ethically struggle. collect the data, have permission to collect the data and that's, then have permission to analyze the data and then, there's a business impact to there and there's a personal impact as well, depending if you've got, if you've got permission or not. And right. given, so given that, presuming, that, presuming you're, you're alluding to, oh, I mean, the fascinating thing is tonight, I'm actually going to be going to Facebook in London, mm -hmm. the new, yeah. their, new, their new headquarters in London for a meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in, I don't know if I mentioned to you when, when we were together, I was in Facebook headquarters um, just before the little incident broke a few months ago. Yeah. And they were, they were very, the security was very hot at the time. Yeah. As I, okay. as I, as I was recording a vlog in, in oh, the Facebook headquarters. And they said, by the way, I, what are you doing over there? And I said, I'm just walking out of Facebook headquarters. Yeah, I'm joking. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so, it's interesting how, how you know, think about the, um, the awareness of what I call the AGFA boys. Yeah? yeah. Apple, Google, Facebook, Amazon. And then, mm -hmm. obviously, the incidents that have been happening in 2018 – and then, mm -hmm. you know, what, what does that mean for society? What does it mean for personal, for privacy? Yeah. yeah? And all those yeah. kind of things. And, and, and I don't think, like, I think the general public, a lot of people, even technical people, I think they think these companies are evil inherently. 
I don't. I don't. I've seen the people on the inside. I know these people, and and mm. they're not evil people. But um, it's not always easy. A lot of times, I, I can tell you, like, you don't have, you know, quote unquote, don't have the budget to do this research. You know, mm. it's hard to tell your boss we need to do this research, and mm. if there's no financial ROI, it has to come from consumer demand. But if the consumers right. don't know what to demand, then they can't demand it. Yeah. Right. So I saw these kind of issues and I said, no, 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 I'm going to step out and mm. I know where this research is. I'm going to go find it and put it together for you so that you can sell it to your boss. Right. right. So okay. So, 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 so on the back of that, there's a kind of a, is, is that, are you going to do that as a kind of a service then back to companies to help them chart their course? Is that the idea? Yes, yeah. yes exactly. Okay. okay. You know? Sometimes uh, if you want to steer a ship, you got to get off the boat and get in front of it. Yeah. Yeah, Pull the yeah. Tongue, you know? I was going to ask you actually because I don't know if I, I, I didn't look at this recently, but obviously there the the Google. Yeah, you showing you showing us your haircut there. Look at that funky haircut. Um, uh, where hey, sat, yeah, give us a profile. Um, the um, the, it wasn't it the, the the mission or the vision of um, of Google was don't be evil, was it, or the core or the strap line or whatever. But I think yeah. that's been that's been removed now, and it's not that's no longer applicable, is it? Is that right? Um, I don't. No, I think they did recently change that. I don't actually know. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't been able to keep up because so much shit has been flying. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was their motto. And the thing that people need to know, though, is like, what's the objective KPI of evil? You know? No, no, I agree. I agree. And, and where does that line get drawn when it comes time for performance reviews? You know? Uh, so, Yeah. Yeah, that's probably all I need to say on that one. No, no, I understand, I understand. Yeah. So, so on the, um, I suppose just taking the story forward, so trying to link these things together. So, you know, you, you explained a bit earlier about your personal growth story about, you know, you, you started very yeah. young, you were making yourself resilient, you were like funding yourself. How yeah. do you think that's, how is that affecting now your projects on your business growth? I mean, do you think yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a link there? Is it is the kind of a, um, you know, cause and effect, and you know, are you, are you, are you, how are you feeling about all that? Um, I think it does absolutely have an impact. So I think um, for the nonprofit, I funded it all myself. All this work, the book, everything is funded by me. Really, it's because I, I got really good at money. I knew how to balance my checkbook and how to maintain bills. Mm. Um, but I think it's also affected my future vision. You know, I'm not one of the founders that I'm uh, looking for investor money. You know, I, okay. I know, I know investors. I have people who have, you know, elbowed me and said, Hey, if you need anything, let me know. Um, but I'm not really interested in investment capital. I would rather create something, uh, small fund myself through that, earn revenue off that, make it bigger, fund myself again and, and just keep funding myself. Well, is that Some phrase, people, is that phrase that I actually, I speak about with quite a few founders and co-founders is that phrase called customer funded. Yeah, mm -hmm. which basically means you fund, you fund your balance sheet yes, through through sa through sales. Yeah, so, so you yeah. basically rather than taking, you know, X or Y or Z from A or B or C yeah. um, to pay salaries to do da 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 da, you actually yeah. <clears throat> you know, you you hustle. You know, like yeah. uh, Gary V or whoever you want to call it, the latest yeah. hustler, um, yeah. and you you, know, you 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 do what you're doing. I mean, I've done it yeah. before a couple of times, yeah. and and it's it's hard. But it actually it makes it really makes you focus, and it makes you go yes. all in about what you're doing. Um, yes, absolutely, it totally does, and I think it also it changes how you approach things, right? When you have investment money, it's for the most part, it's all based on perception. You know, mm. when you are driving real value into an economy and you're getting paid, that's a different business. Mm. That's a totally different business. I mean, there's I mean, one, there's what there's one, there's one um, company that I've I've. I may be doing some work with at some point and they, uh, but maybe not, I don't know, but they've, there's one company that's taken 148 million in VC, a tech mm -hmm. startup in San Francisco. Another one's yeah. taken 430 million. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, just, I mean, what, what do you spend that kind of money on? Yeah. Well, I mean, cat. yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, that's a lot of milk for the cat, right? Is that's crystal. I think that's, that's milk with crystal champagne poured in it, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not that I'm against it, you know. So, some people, that's the way to go. Mm. Um, and, and sometimes for – sometimes that's just the way to go, period. Um, but for me, it's just not my style. I just don't want to be in debt to someone. Um, I, I think that I have 
found problems that are ready to be solved and I can make money off them yeah. uh, in a legitimate way. So well, it's and, finding and, that kind of link between what you're passionate about and what you love to do and also link it to something that me- means something. Yeah. It's like your why, isn't it? I think, yeah, I think well, it sounds like you, you, you've, got, you've done some work around that to work out that yeah. intersection. Well, right. and yes and no. Um, I think I'm getting to that point in my life. Um, but I think that what other people don't see is all the times that I've ate my own shit, you know, to like, for lack of better words, like, um, right. there's things that when I talk to students about this, they say, you need to do what you need to do until what you want to do is what you need to do. Yeah. 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 You know? yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so I've done that, you know, like I said, hey, we've we got to write down that quote. We've got to write that quote down. <laughs> yeah. It on at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Not, and it's not just in Timberlake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, but I mean, I grew up in a body shop, man, uh, fixing cars and taking metal scrap to recycling places. Like my dad told me, he goes, if I could do it all over again, I'd recycle metal. And that's not a glory job. You know, mm. um, I grew up in a, in a in a mindset like that, just do what you need to do and pay the well, bills. I, I don't know if you know this, but I, my first job was actually working for, it's now, it's now gone defunct, but there's a, there's a very famous retailer in the, in, in the UK called Woolworths. Mm-hmm. I don't know you may, you may have heard of them. They still, uh-huh. they still operate, I think in South Africa and, and Australia, I think. But I actually mm-hmm. swept the floor. I swept the floor mm-hmm. every day during the, during when, I, when I was at college, you know, from half four to seven o'clock, you know, f- filled up boxes and then, then basically put me on the, on the, on the, then they put me on the computer department on Saturday uh-huh. to sell, to sell spectrums and, and Commodore 64s and yeah. games. That was my promotion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it just shows how, you know, sweeping the floor is kind of, it, it kind of, the stuff you find on the floor, as you can imagine, yeah. is fairly interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. We'll, we'll move swiftly on from that one. Um, yeah. So, so I suppose looking at the, the future of technology, so the future mm-hmm. of tech, um, you know, are you concerned? Are you excited about the future? What, what's, your, what's your kind of perspective on that? Um, I'm personally not concerned. I think there are concerns to be had, and I think that that's totally respectable when people have them. Um, but I'm not concerned because if you look at history, we've always figured these things out, you know. Um, the airplane, for example, you think that that didn't scare people? The first time, imagine... Yeah. Being in your backyard, doing some laundry, and all of a sudden this big piece of metal goes flying over. <laughs> your head. What the hell? What the, right, what the Wright brothers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or or nuclear bomb scared mm. everyone. Mm. Uh, and and yes, we've had some accidents, just like we're having accidents right now in big tech. Mm. Um, but we've made yeah. it through, and we've mm. figured things out. You know, um, and I think we will figure these things out too. Is it going to be easy? No. Uh, is it going to take a lot of people working together? Yes, absolutely. But I think that if you see what's going on right now, there are a lot of people who are starting to turn that leaf over and say, yeah, it's time. You know, I'm not the only one. I think I, I've uh, been one of several that have helped spearhead this, mm. uh, you know, but, but I am not the only one and I do not plan to take credit for it at all. Uh, I just, I'm lucky that I had the opportunity to step out and, and I, other people can see what I'm doing and, and feel like they can do it too, you know? I mean, the interesting thing is I was just thinking when you were speaking was, um, you know, my, my youngest son, James, and my oldest son, Ben, is, is actually 13 and 14. So um, mm-hmm. just, you know, just thinking when your story is about they're actually right at the age that you started to, you know, get exposed to technology. They've both, yeah. got, iP- they've both got iPads, they've both got iPhones, they both know what YouTube is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it just, I, it just makes me think, you know, when they're 29, <laughs> what, yeah. are they, what are they going to know? And, yeah. um, and, um, trips me yeah, out, man. It just, it just kind of makes me think just, just right now when you, when you're talking about, you know, what, how, you know, what, what I was, what I was exposed to when I was 13 and what you did yeah. and then what my sons are, it's just, I mean, it's just mind blowing really the kind of yeah. the, the, the progress that's, that's yeah. happening here. Yeah. So, yes. but as you say, yeah, I mean the, uh, that sometimes th- things need to go the wrong way for them to be corrected and brought back on track. So, you know, I yeah, think yeah. maybe these things, is, uh, you know, I just, I just look on the street every day in London and I see, you know, that Facebook is now, you know, advertising. We're good. Yeah. We look after your yeah. data. We do this, we do that. And obviously yeah. there's a lot, you must be spending yeah. millions on advertising that now that they're, they're yeah. you know, any, et cetera. I'm not saying anymore. 
Okay. Anyway, well, this, I, is not, this, is not, this is not a tech bashing session. It's just a kind of a discussion about some of the things yeah, that are out, think, part of our yeah. lives, I suppose, isn't it? I think you can think about it kind of like the stock market too, right? I mean, when the stock market is crashing, the general public and a lot of people freak out. They all mm. start selling and it just gets worse. Yeah, right? it's like a downward spiral. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And right now, things are rough. They're kind of going down. Mm. Uh, but we always hit a point where we start investing again and things go up. If you look at the stock market over time, it has always gone up. Well, the good thing is I just converted some, um, some, 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 uh, some, some actual, some dollars into, into sterling today. And the good news is that the, 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 the exchange rates go in the right direction over the last three months. The pound is definitely getting stronger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, just talking to actually, um, you know, the bot Mitsuku by chance. Right. Heard of that? I've heard of it. Um, I don't know a lot about it. Well, it's, it's a pretty famous bot. Anyway, it's, it's, uh, there, the founder was down here in Brazil and he was talking okay. about and then, uh, how much his money's worth down here in Brazil. And I was like, damn, you lucky. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you used yeah. to do it. You used to do a Toscano, Toscano bot. Yeah, I know. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at the, so looking at the prediction. What, what, what? So what? You know, we're now in twenty eighteen now. Yeah. So what? what any, any view on what's what's it going to be like in 2023, 20, 20, 28? 2023, twenty twenty eight? Twenty 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 eight. So I think um, I, I might answer this a little different. I think um, the upcoming elections right from a perspective of like where is this going to be in the public mind i think this upcoming election in the united states in 2020 and and globally you know around the same time i think it's going to start to become an issue a political topic you know well, I think you, mean it's, you mean tech and privacy and ethics yes. and all that stuff right okay and, and and that and that means that these issues have become on top of mind of public right the public yeah. begin to understand yeah. that i mean are you talking about the kind of the the whole the noise around the last last u.s election and and the kind of perceived manipulation and all that kind of stuff or a little bit but mostly i'm talking about like the previous elections a lot of this stuff has been happening for a right. while yeah and okay. the public's just unaware just, just awareness think, yeah yeah okay I so the level, that, of, level of awareness is great basically yes great which means there's more people involved in it too right we have more people getting into mm. the field working with it, understanding the issues. I think the next election after that, it's a real topic. It's actually a big issue, which mm. means that it's impacting people's lives. We have a lot of people involved. Things are changing very rapidly. Um, mm -hmm. And I think by then, you know, 2023, 2025 area, you start to see really, really good artificial intelligence. And I don't necessarily mean good by ethical. I hope it is ethical. But I mean, I think really high quality, very powerful artificial intelligence in the next five to six years. So what you're saying uh, is tech, tech, tech for good in a, in a, with some real use cases that have real impact, like in healthcare right. and, and, and right. various transportation, et cetera, et cetera, social right. care. Yeah, right. okay. Um, I think over time, you know, 10, 20 years down the road, um, you'll start to see more sustainable communities pop up through this. I think uh, we're going to get really good virtual reality, augmented reality stuff, and, and my prediction for that, and I can't necessarily give you a time right now, I'd say, you know, closer to the 20-year range probably if I had to guess, but mm. I think you're going to start to see a world where people really love this stuff yeah. and want to kind of live in that world. And uh, you have another part of the world that they don't really care about it. Um, they just want to use technology more as a utility. Right. And they kind of live on their own with an enhanced lifestyle. I mean, personally, I would love to own my own farm you know, and, and when you think of farm, you think of like widespread, lots of like, I'm talking like a plot of land where I can automate the farming, you know, that's, because that's because, have, that's because you're from Nebraska. That's what it is. You see, it's all that farmland. It, it? it might be. I think it's a generational thing though. You know, it's just a sustainability thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. could create a whole ecosystem. So, so create, so create your own tech garden of Eden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that way. <laughs> uh, something like that. But yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of, uh, especially the kids, like you were talking about with your kids. Like I think the next generation is going to create some really cool stuff that we can't even imagine right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, and, and I think we're going to have dramatic changes happen in the next 10 to 20 years because of that. Mm. So I, like I said, I can't tell you exactly what that is. But well, I do. well, the only question I suppose it links to that is, is do you think Skynet will, will be created in the future? I think uh, it, 
definitely could happen. You know, I'll say that. <laughs> it could I don't think okay. that it's going. You, do, you don't I, think it exists already, then? Yeah. No, I feel pretty free. <laughs> you okay. know, like I do. I do understand people's concerns, and and I have those concerns. Right? I do. I write about it in my book. I cover all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we are in a very, very monitored present. Uh, yeah. World. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Um, but you know, having traveled the world, having seen how all this stuff's impacting people and, and looking at history, I, I think we're still very free, at least, you know, in the United States, in Europe, you know, no matter mm -hmm. who's running our countries right now, like we're still very free and fortunate. Yeah. Uh, and, and we have the time to make sure that what's created is humane. You know, yeah. that's why, I'm, that's why I'm writing the book. You know, the, the, and so to go back to what's in the book, the third part is like, where could it go well? And it paints that picture. What could it be in 10, 20 years? Okay. What are the good parts? And then the last part is how do we make sure that we give the good parts without the bad parts? It talks about regulation. It talks about how we make those steps. And I think when you read it, you'll realize like, this is starting to already happen. You know, it's not there, but. Well, just, uh, just quick question. Quick question. So part, part one was about like current reality yeah yes the dangers the what is the potential of skynet right yeah part two Absolutely. part two was about what sorry part two was just how did we get this position okay how okay 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 right three is where could it be and then four is how do we get there okay so, okay so and it's what, an actual I'll, roadmap for the future and and on that and on that topic of your book and i know we'll we'll go through the details at the end but yeah. um one of the things that, I mean, I was just blown away. I know we only looked at it briefly before, but the, 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 the visualization of what you've, you've done, it's not just words, it's actually visuals as well, isn't it? <clears throat> so, yeah. I, can't, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I can't, I can't wait to get hold of the book at some point. But I was yeah. also going to say, my, my thought when I, when I was looking through that visual with you the other week was, you, I think you could create some amazing posters and some amazing kind of, you know, t-shirts and all that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying a merchandise mad, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but just, just the, just the impact that I had just, you know, sat yeah. on that session with before looking at some of the, the, the visualizations that have been created. Yeah. It was just, yeah. I was just like, well, you saw my reaction. I was like, Oh wow. Yeah. yeah it's like, yeah. wow, Thank you. brilliant. Absolutely amazing. And I know you yeah. did, I know you did a lot of work on, on the layout and everything like that. I know you did, you, you worked yeah. like a, a marathon man, like a Spartan to get that, to get that book yeah. out. So it's pretty crazy. So yeah, anyway, that's just my, my my little bit of give feedback to you. I think I think you're onto something with the visuals and with the words as well. Obviously, yeah. Well, words. I think you know we're entering an era where, for lack of better words, people don't want to read. You know, we tweet everything, we read headlines, we et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, I think that you know we need to make these things punchier, and in order to mm. make it punchier, it needs to be visualized because or you imp can, impactful kind of thing, impactful, make people think. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A picture is worth a thousand words. Right. <laughs> yeah, just gonna say that. never truer you know there's mm. so many things in tech that it's hard to visualize it's hard to understand because it's not tangible yeah and so exactly. i wanted to do that for people and, yeah. and i hope i do and and something that the book i hope lays a foundation for is what i hope to work on in my future um is a media company where i want to work on creating engaging interactive data stories right google's okay. Google's goal is to organize the world's information. Mm -hmm. I want to make the world's information engaging. Okay. Period. You know, and um, I think the future of that is creating multi. -sensory That's a great mission. That's a great mission. That is. That's a great mission. Because I was thinking, because unfortunately for me, you see, because my surname is Turner. Yeah? yeah. So because of Ted Turner, obviously I can't create a, a big, a large media corporation. Otherwise, he'd sue me. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, but you can have the, you can have the, you know, the, the t t Toscana media corporation yeah, yeah? tmc yeah. there you go just gonna make tmc you know what? With TMC. That name, we could sell pizza and it would go right along with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you could be tmc.io it's supposed to be yeah. .io now isn't it that's supposed to be the, mm -hmm. the, the main the main extension yeah, yeah. Um, so just just trying to um I know we've been running for a while and it's been a fascinating session already is looking back at some of you know you giving back so some advice and suggestions about you know you're a you're a ceo you're a founder of yeah. your uh your the tmc as i'm gonna call it now the two yeah. to media company um <laughs> there you go tmc tv um 
what would be your advice? You know, if, if, what, if, if, if people come across a great idea, they've yeah. really, seen, really seen a problem they want to solve. And, and yeah. you know, what, what, what's, what's, what's your kind of, if they want to grow and flourish in this digital economy, you know, what, what's your kind of advice to them? So I, maybe a couple pieces here. One, one, for entrepreneurs, people, you know, I know there's a lot of people like me and uh, you have a lot of crazy ideas, a lot of them. And uh, sometimes it's obnoxious. So write them down, <laughs> write them down, you know, and, and um, keep a list, keep a notebook of all your ideas and then start to see patterns in your own ideas over right. time. And, and curate, that's when you'll start, like to curate them kind of thing. Yeah. And that's when you'll start to see the ones that are worth going after versus the right. ones that are kind of crazy ideas. Um, and the second one, and this is more from my personal experience over the last year and a half or so of doing this, mm -hmm. like, a lot. Mm. Um, take care of yourself uh, because mm. especially I've been on the road for 14 months straight now uh, and, and that's, it's brutal. You know, yeah. if you, you know, it's so hard to be in another state or another country with friends and, and they're like, Oh, but you're only here for a day. And, and I hate to say that, but it's, <laughs> yeah, that's what everyone says. Right. And so mm. if I actually went out and I did, I lived my life like that, I would just, my body would be garbage, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you have to get your sleep. You have to eat well. You have to realize that, like, you will be back there someday. You know, I think uh, another part about me that's really different than I think most of my peers when I was growing up is when we would go to, like, famous agencies or something, everyone's trying to take pictures of the walls and take pictures of the agency and live, like, they'll never be back there. And I always mm. live, like, I'm going to be here again someday, you know? So take care of yourself, and if you do it right, you will be back there, you, wherever you are. You know? So, so that, that's a really good thing. So one of the things that you know, I've learned over the years is about you know, diet, obviously, and things like um, mm -hmm. what I would call movement practice. So mm -hmm. do, you do, any, do you do any kind of, I mean, so one of my, the guys that I really look up to and thinks an amazing kind of um, uh, exponent of this is uh, Ido Portal. I don't know if you've heard of that guy. Have you heard of Ido Portal? No. So he, so you remember Conor McGregor? Conor McGregor was the MMA uh, yep. world champion. Yeah. Yep. So when, so when, when Conor recently fought uh, Floyd Mayweather in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Ido was his trainer. Okay. Um, so he trained him, and he's basically an Israeli guy, and I came across him okay. earlier this year, and he's he basically um, have a look at what he does. He's, so he's called Ido Portal, and. That's my gift back to you because movement practice, you yeah. know, I, 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 you know, monkey walks, crazy monkey. Da, 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 da. I mean, some of the stuff that you, that you get up to, uh, it's kind of like yoga and, 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 and basically strength and everything like that. It's absolutely yeah. amazing. It's amazing mm -hmm. what you can do with the human body. So if you're doing a lot of traveling, uh, yeah. it's definitely something I would, I would advocate to so you have a look at if, unless you've got your own routine that you already do, because you do that anyway. Oh, I yeah. Know. I mean, it's hard for me to have a routine because of how much traveling I do. Um, but I'd say my staples, I mean, I do a lot of yoga. I've been doing yoga. Okay. You do. Oh, you do yoga. Okay. Right. Fine. Yeah. yeah. I've been doing yoga for more than 10 years now. Um, right. Okay. And I recently got a longboard. So that gets me oh, some wow. 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 Yeah. Wow. That's me, you know, when I, I can take it to different cities, just put it in a plane and take it really easily, not like a bike, you know? So I walk around everywhere. I, mm -hmm. On board, I make sure I get yeah you know, that motion, you know, in my yeah, body. Okay. Yeah, that was what I'm saying about the movement practice. Keep moving. Yeah, it's that thing about yeah. keep moving. Yeah, so, exactly. Oh well, if you if you've done yoga, you that you know, but look at look at what he yeah. does doing. Amazing, amazing yeah, stuff. That's thing. Um, okay, so takeaways. So, what are the top three things uh, you would like to kind of you know? What are your final thoughts for today's today's episode? Um, you know, if you if you're going to try to summarize the last hour. Um, yeah. What what we what would be your what would be your uh, your three three to five points you'd like to share? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think uh, for the entrepreneurs out there, keep track of yourself, both your mental and your physical wellness. Your ideas, write them down. Right, it's value. Everything you do is value, even if you think it's a scrap. Um, people in the field already and entrepreneur, everyone. Um, we are playing a role in something that's much larger than us and yeah. you'll never be at the top of it. No one ever will mm. be. Mm. So take that role seriously and challenge yourself to create the future you want to be a part of. Mm. Because even if you just create a small part of it, you've done it. You've made it. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> and number three is be mindful of what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. I learned this younger. I, I played college lacrosse and uh, oh, right. international yeah. lacrosse. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I learned, you know, the responsibility of influence. I had kids ask me to sign their jerseys. I've been, you know, coaching camps and stuff. And, and what I learned is once you reach a certain point in life, and, and it's similar to me right now as I'm traveling, giving these talks, yeah. people look up to you. Yeah. Own you're, that. You're, you're, inf you're big influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, be responsible with it because you only have one chance to, to, to run that. And um, it's easy to ruin it. It's easy to throw it away. Mm. So take that with responsibility and pride uh, yeah. because uh, there are very few people that achieve that. So be proud of it and uh, be responsible. Those are Fantastic. my three. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, you know, this has been the first episode that we've done from Brazil. So you, you've got a worldwide yeah. first on that one. So thank Hell you yeah. very much. Thank you very much for participating. And I suppose the final thing is, I suppose, on the on the on this amazing literature that you're going to be bringing out. Um, what's the? Do you want to, do you want to kind of explain to the audience what it's called, when it's coming out, how the people can get hold of it? Yeah. Is that, um, is that, can you share that? It's called Automating Humanity. It Ooh. is on Amazon right now. Yeah, oh. you, can, you can look that one up. Um, well, and, what, is it, what is a pre-order or something? Is it? Oh. It's pre-order right now. It's coming out in October. So you'll get it mid-October, I believe, is when it's scheduled right now. Um, and then for the nonprofit, where you can find – um, complementary resources to the book, right? Because once you launch a book, a book is old. No, no, no. My, book, <laughs> my book's not old. I didn't say that, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it will have complementary research. It will have more real time information. It will have tutorials. That's at designgood.tech. So Design. you want to reach out to me. Okay. You want to where I'm going to be. You want extra resources for your team, your company, your whatever. Um, designgood.tech. So. okay fantastic well yeah. thank you thank you so much it's been a fascinating time on this episode uh, i can't thank That's you enough for it um and I'm, I'm i'm honored to be with you on this uh, on this on this time ahead of this book so i think it's going to be huge i think you've yeah. done an amazing piece of work there man and i think i'm really really pleased for you and i think it's yeah. going to be massive because i know i know that well, you you i remember that last, last call before we did this session was you were you just come off that session with the New York guys and you, you were so excited. It was just, I yeah. wish I'd recorded that session. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's My great eyes to... are probably really puffy too, huh? <laughs> no, but it's no, no sleep. What, no well, sleep. Like, yeah, well, no, exactly. But what I'm saying is it's great. You, you know, you, you, you're creating something here. Yeah, you're creating yeah. something that, that goes down in your history and goes down in world history, you know, and, and yes. I think it's very worthwhile what you're doing. So yeah. all I can do is say, you know, I can tip my hat if I had a hat. I can, I can yeah. bow, my, bow my head and say, Great that we did this episode today. I'd like to yeah. get you on a future episode once we've got that book out there. And, and obviously, yeah. when you're back in London, or when I'm in Sao Paulo, we've got to keep in contact. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, got to, we've got to have that, um, I don't know, herbal tea or green tea. Yeah, or, yeah right. Absolutely. Yeah, herb, no, it's herb, 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 herbal beer. Or maybe, herbal beer. Maybe in Colorado or something. Ve vegan beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. so thanks for your time I hope you have a fantastic day the rest of your day because I know you're a few hours behind us in London here so yes. um, yeah. have a great time and uh, so where, where are you going next few weeks you're going to be to going to yeah, what, uh, to, to Brazil uh, Is it, or, next, are you staying in Brazil or where are you going next so uh, the next week I'm in Nebraska and then go to California uh, but you're looking like next month month and a half I go Nebraska, California, Colorado, Nebraska, Australia, Nebraska, Chicago. Uh, hey, you got to you got to get some t-shirts printed up. Yeah, the, TM, the, the TMC the TMC tour. Yeah, the TMC tour. <laughs> run TMC, run TMC. Yeah, there you go, run TMC. Perfect. You Hashtag. You heard yeah. it here first. All right, yeah. man. Thanks very much for your time. That was the GNT session. That was episode eight with Joe Toscana, who's a gonna be. A very well, he already is pretty famous already, but he's going to be more famous when Automating Humanity comes out in October. And you can pre order it on Amazon, and I'm going to be getting it very soon. And I want a poster signed, yeah. you know, signed Absolutely. by JT. Absolutely. Uh, and Absolutely. Um, have a great day. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you for having me.